Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Kemp here, and I am going to read the next chapter of The World According to Humphrey. We are on chapter three, and chapter three is called The Two Faces of Mrs. Brisbane. That week was busy, 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 but I learned a lot. I learned all of the capitals of the United States. I didn't say I remembered them all, but I learned them all. I learned about how water changes from solid to liquid to gas. I learned how to subtract fractions. I learned something else, something very weird. There are two Mrs. Brisbane's. And I thought one Mrs. Brisbane was too many. The first Mrs. Brisbane is a good teacher, just like Aldo said. She's better than Miss Mack was at getting AJ to lower his voice. She's better at getting Heidi to raise her hand before she blurts something out loud. Of course, nobody could get Speak Up Saya to raise her hand or blurt anything out loud. Saya is so quiet and gentle. She never gives an answer. If the teacher calls on her, she stares down at her desk without saying a word. But when it's Saya's turn to clean my cage and feed me, she holds me in her hand so gently, I feel like I'm floating on a cloud. Hello. She whispers, your fur is so beautiful. I always feel calmer when Saya holds me. She's so nice, I wish Mrs. Brisbane would leave her alone. <clears throat> Miss Mack hardly ever called on Saya once she realized how shy she was. But Mrs. Brisbane calls on her all the time. She won't leave her alone. Saya, speak up, please. I know you know the answer, she'd say, while Saya stared at the top of her desk as if she were watching a TV show there. But I was shocked when Mrs. Brisbane got annoyed with Saya, sweet, shy Saya, and said, you will stay in during recess. Saya still stared down without moving a muscle, but a minute later, I saw something wet drop from Saya's eye to the tabletop. I hated Mrs. Brisbane. Of course, I don't go out to recess. In fact, I'm glad, since it's a great time to catch up on my sleep. So I was there when Mrs. Brisbane talked to Saya, and I was all ready to squeak up on her behalf if necessary. Mrs. Brisbane brought a stack of papers from the table and sat down across from Saya. Saya, you think I'm being mean to you, don't you? Saya slowly shook her head no. I heartily nodded my head yes, but no one was looking at me. But I wouldn't call on you if I didn't know that you know the answers, the teacher explained. Look at your papers and tests. You get 100% on everything, spelling, science, geography, and arithmetic. Your vocabulary is excellent, but I haven't heard you speak. Can you tell me why? I checked my notebook and I was pretty impressed. I only got an 85% on the last vocabulary test. This girl is smart. Saya still did not speak. Saya, I'm going to have to send a note home to your parents. Maybe they can help me figure out what to do, said Mrs. Brisbane. Saya looked up, very frightened. No, please, she said. Mrs. Brisbane looked surprised. She reached over and patted Saya's arm. Arm. I won't send a note now, if you'll promise to try. Saya looked back down at the desk and nodded. I'll tell you what. I won't call on you if you promise that sometime within the next week you'll raise your hand on your own and answer a question. Is that a deal? Saya nodded, very slowly this time. You don't have, you have to say it, Mrs. Brisbane told her. Deal, Saya whispered. Terrific, said Mrs. Brisbane, smiling. Now how would you like to erase the board for me? Saya jumped up and hurried to the board. All of the students in room 26 liked to erase the board for some reason. Mrs. Brisbane was sure hard to figure out. She hadn't been mean to say it at all. She did what a teacher is supposed to do. I liked this Mrs. Brisbane. I even liked the pink blouse she had on. But at the end of the day when the students were gone, the second Mrs. Brisbane came back, the really scary one. She straightened up the room and came over to the window to close the blinds. I could only hope that Aldo would open them for me later. She looked down and saw the table around me was messy. The bag of shavings used for my bedding had torn and bits of litter were scattered all over the table. Garth had done the cleaning and left the lid off my treats box. The whole table looked untidy. 
Good grief, said Mrs. Brisbane in a very unhappy voice. I decided to take a spin on my wheel. Usually that cheers people up, but not Mrs. Brisbane. She started to clean the table, getting paper towels and cleaning spray and muttering to herself the whole time. Not my job, she grumbled. These children are not responsible. All I need is somebody to take care of, some rodent. Nobody says rodent quite the way Mrs. Brisbane does. Then she looked down at me with angry eyes and said, You are a troublemaker, and somehow I'm going to get rid of you. Then she grabbed her purse and her papers and stormed out of room 26. For once, I didn't mind being left alone. I didn't even mind the tick, tick, tick of the clock. I was just glad, glad, glad that Mrs. Brisbane was gone. I was worried about what she'd said, but I kept my mind occupied by practicing my vocabulary words until the light was completely gone. If Saya got 100% correct, why couldn't I? Then I sat and waited. Suddenly, bright lights blinded my eyes as the door swung open and a familiar voice roared, Never fear! Aldo's here! Aldo rolled his cart over to my cage and put his face down next to mine. How's it going, Humphrey? he asked. I tried squeaking out my story, but Aldo didn't quite catch what I was saying. Whoa, pal, something's got your tail in a tizzy. Well, this should cheer you up. Aldo reached into a brown paper bag, pulled out something, pulled something out, and dangled it in front of my cage. Something to gnaw on, little buddy, he said, opening the door. Joy, 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 a tiny dog biscuit. One of Miss Mac's friends gave me one of these once. You can crunch on it forever. Ha ha! Suddenly there's a smile on your face. Aldo beamed with pride. Now I'll clean this room real fast so we can eat our dinner together. I never saw anybody move as fast as Aldo. He turned the music up full blast. Then he mopped and polished and swept and scrubbed while I nibbled and gnawed on my biscuit. When he was finished, Aldo pulled up a chair to my cage and took out his big sandwich. You know, Humphrey, some folks think I'm crazy talking to a hamster, but you're better company than a lot of people I know. Here, have a nice salad. It's good for you. He tore off a tiny piece of lettuce and pushed it through the wires of my cage. Thank you, I squeaked. You're welcome, said Aldo. So, what were you talking about last night? Oh, yeah, loneliness. You know, I have friends, Humphrey, but during the day when I'd like to do something, go bowling or to a movie or something, they're at work. And when they want to do something, I'm at work. Of course, there's the weekend, but I usually see my family, you know? My brother and his family, my nieces and nephews. I got a big family. Suddenly, Aldo bopped the side of his head with the palm of his hand. Whoa, Humphrey, I never told you. My nephew, he's in your class. Richie Rinaldi, he sits over there. He pointed to the far side of the room. He always has the neatest desk in class. He'd better, or he'll hear from his uncle. Do you know him? Of course, I squeaked. Repeat that, please, Richie, one of the nicest boys in the class. But he mumbled a lot and usually had to repeat something two or three times to be understood. Aldo crunched his bag and tossed it into the trash. Well, I'm out of here. You know, they got a frog in room 16, but he's not good company like you are. He sings nice, though. Sing? I'll sing for you, Aldo, I thought. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Don't worry. I don't like him nearly as much as you, my friend, Aldo said. He opened the blinds to let the light in. Just as he was going out the door, Aldo said, See you next week, Humphrey. Next week? A cold chill came over me. Tomorrow was Friday. When Miss Mac was in room 26, she took me home for the weekend. But if Mrs. Brisbane didn't take me home, I'd have two very long days and nights with no one, not even Aldo, to feed me or chat with me. Even worse, what if Mrs. Brisbane did take me to her house? What fate would await me there? I had plenty to keep me busy the rest of the night, worrying about Mrs. Brisbane and how she planned to do away with me. Miss Mac, please come back. And that is the end of chapter three.